When was the last time you looked in your fuse box and checked that the fuses are of the right rating that are recommended? Usually there should be a ratings map on the back of the fuse box cover. So it's worth checking out just in case somebody shoved a nail in there. <laughs> Welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. Today we're going to have a look at the top side and use a bit of the MOT testers manual to guide ourselves around it. It's easier to stand outside the vehicle and check your seat belts, so we're going to consider this in with the top side checks. Okay, so we'll start with the seats first and the seat bases to make sure they're secure. Point two and point three is to check the backrest that they can sit upright and the driver's position can be moved, so this is worth checking. It goes without saying if your vehicle is fitted with seat belts that the anchors have to be um, secure and the seat belt has to be in good condition. Generally you would pull it out and give it a tug to make sure it locks and then check the webbing. This seat belt here you can see it's clearly damaged and the belt would have been caught between the catch and the door. You don't need to look too hard to see that this would bring a concern to an MOT tester. This defender door catch is a real pain in the back side. And if you're not too careful, it will take the seat out of your pants, like it has done with this pair. Okay, you want to make sure that they catch in as well, and the catch is secure. Some of the points are not relevant for Land Rovers, and this includes attachment to the seat frame. However, with the seat belt, it wants to make sure that it's not badly frayed, and it's secure, and you cannot repair a seat belt at all. Um, any plastic fixings, as long as they can be loose, as long as they do not interfere with the belt operation. That's the last note at the bottom there. This is another one to go down on the list of defects of the vehicle. So, just to recap, you want to pull the seat belt webbing against the anchorage so it's secured to the vehicle. Examine the condition of the seat belt webbings for cuts and deterioration. You also want to make sure that you pay particular attention to the webbing around the anchorage buckles and loops and examine the condition of all seat belt attachment and attachment fittings, that's for the whole vehicle. Carrying on with the top side, we're going to have a look at things that are loose, things that are broken, and I found a lock that is missing on the window. Yeah, that's not very good. A security item, also the cap isn't locking, and is leaking as well. The seal itself is letting diesel go past it, so I've got another one here quickly that I bought from Bearmark. I should make you aware at this point that the lugs that are on the caps depend on what the lugs are on the tank filler. This is a two lug. Anyway, that's another two keys to add to the ever growing bunch. Part number is up here, just in case you need to get yourself a filler cap. Okay, so continuing with the walk around, I'm making sure that there's nothing loose and there's no sharp edges anywhere to hurt anybody. We also want to pay attention to the doors and the catches. So, as the tester's manual says, that you want to be checking the door latches, make sure they're closed properly. The driver's and the front passenger's doors need to be open from both the inside and the outside of the vehicle. And point C, which is important, any other passenger door can be opened from the outside of the vehicle. They also recommend checking the hinges, catches and pillars for presence. What it basically means at point two, that the door can be opened and shut and it's not hanging off. So basically what I do is make sure the hinges are there, the door can be opened and it's not hanging off. And then also check the seals and the condition of the frame. Yeah, that's okay. I also check the rubbers, the glass condition, make sure that all the bolts are there. Other things that are hanging off and loose can be a hazard. Mirrors have got to be secure and the doors as I said opened, they got the hinges there and they're not badly worn so we're alright there. The doors actually are not in very good condition at the bottom of the frames as we already know the Land Rover doors have rot very quickly. Just a point to remember that sharp edges or projection caused by corrosional damage could render the vehicle dangerous so that could be an MOT failure. Uh, we're having a look around to make sure there's nothing's hanging off, nothing sharp will do any damage. Right, so now what I'm going to do is start to look at the windscreen, the rubber, and that's not in very good condition. Um, the window wipers, they are actually very important, the condition and the security of them. This one fell off in my hand and uh, it didn't go on very well, 
But what I'm basically checking for here is the rubber condition and the condition of the wiper blades themselves. They should be able to wipe the screen easily. Now they should operate properly. You can see this one on the Defender is loose. It's because of the splined adapter here. Well, the splines are worn, so the wiper is rendered inoperable. Now, going back to the wiper blades themselves and making sure they're not split, that also is an MOT failure. Best thing to do is make sure you renew them often. The wipers should wipe the whole screen in the A and B zone, and we'll get back to that later. But you can see that these wipers are working all right. We have a stone chip in the window screen, which would be in a prescribed zone A here. And a failure would be if it's a larger than a 10 millimeter diameter, which is the size of a five pence piece. This is all right, but this is starting to crack out. We'll come away from that for now. And we're gonna concentrate on things that are loose. On the front here, things like lights, and especially your headlights. Your headlights have not got to be loose. They've got to be secure. Same with your lighting fixtures and your bumpers, anything else. And this one here has two loose bolts. I don't know who's put this in, but they haven't even screwed them in. And that's very disappointing. When somebody says it's illegal to have a number plate in the window screen, the reason is, is that it should be legible from 20 meters, either front or rear from the vehicle. Hopefully you have the correct number plates and they should be visible and secure on the vehicle. This fell off, so we're going to have to fix it back on in somewhere that can be visible from 20 meters, which will be the front bumper. Okay, so after walking about your vehicle, making sure there's nothing loose, next thing to do is to check your tire depths with a depth gauge of some description and write them down. Keep a record of this. You also want to make sure that there's no damage on the sidewalls and the wheels are not cracked anywhere. Generally, what you're looking for is unusual wear and anything that the police might pull you up on because the first thing they look at when they pull you over for a check Okay, so the minimum tread depth is 1.6 millimeters throughout a continuous band, and that's the central three quarters of the breadth of the tread and around the entire circumference of the tire. So I hope you understand that, but generally what you do is check your tire depths and then inspect later to see if there's any damage to the tires when you turn the wheels. We'll do this when we jack the vehicle up to do a front and rear axle check. I have this tire gauge which is a little bit more accurate and we're looking at 5mm on the outer, 0 on where it doesn't need to be, 2mm or just over 2mm in the centre and we're going down to 1.1mm, okay. Now the tire is actually feathered, this means the tracking's out because it's worn more on the inside than the outside which is not a good sign. Generally this would be a sign of tracking but it also could be because there's worn suspension or steering components and you see by this a drag link it's actually got a lot of play in it but this wouldn't affect the tracking. What I'm suspicious about is when I pull this up straight the other end of the drag link goes on to a severe angle which is not right they should both be even. You can tell this I'll show you pull this up and watch the other end it's like that that's not right so there's bad fitting technique there later on in the series we'll be learning about checking the steering and looking for worn suspension and uh, steering components anyway back to the plot you could use a depth gauge like this which you can buy very cheaply you could get a gauge like this which is highly visible and a little bit more accurate which is not really required for checking tread depths 